Hinduism would not be eternal were it not constantly growing and spreading, and taking in new areas of experience, precisely because it has this power of self-addition and readaptation, in greater degree than any other religion that the world has even seen, we believe it to be the one immortal faith. If the many and the one be indeed the same reality, then it is not all modes of worship alone, but equally all modes of work, all modes of struggle, all modes of creation, which are paths of realization. No distinction, henceforth, between sacred and secular. To labor is to pray. To conquer is to renounce. Life is itself religion. To have and to hold is as stern a trust as to quit and to avoid. We must create a history of India in living terms. Up to the present that history, as written by the English, practically begins with war and hastings, and crams in certain unavoidable preliminaries, which cover a few thousands of years. The history of India has yet to be written for the first time. It has to be humanized, emotionalized, made the trumpet voice and evangel of the race that inhabit India. Robert Burns in his splendid indifference to rank, and Whitman in his glorification of common things, have points of kinship with him, but to such radiant white heart of childlikeness, it would be impossible to find a perfect counterpart. For the attention of the poet chronicler is fixed on the invisible shackles of selfhood that bind us all. He seems to be describing great events, in reality he does not for one instant forget that he is occupied with the history of souls, depicting the incidents of their experience and knowledge on the external world. In the sublime imagination of the beatific vision, he catches a hint of a deeper reality. But why, he asks, this distinction between time and eternity, can the apprehension of the infinite good be conditioned by the clock? Oh, for a knowledge undimensioned, untimed, effect of no cause, cause of no effect. Our daily life creates our symbol of God. No two ever cover quite the same conception. Our whole past shall be made a part of the world's life. That is what is called the realization of the national idea but it must be realized everywhere. For thousands of years must Indian women have risen with the light to perform, the salutation of the threshold. Thousands of years of simplicity, and patience, like that of the peasant, like that of the grass, speak in the beautiful right. It is this patience of woman that makes civilizations. It is this patience of the Indian woman, with this her mingling of large power of reverie, that has made, and makes the Indian nationality,